such full name. For example, uh, PUP uh, dash Juan de la Cruz. Otherwise, you may use your full name as meeting ID. Remember that your microphone and video camera are disabled by default. You may enable them if it is your turn to interact. Be respectful. Don't interrupt the presenter and keep your mic on mute and camera off while someone is presenting to avoid unnecessary distractions. Be an active participant. Provide inputs and respond to the speaker's request for comments or questions. Questions and clarifications will be entertained after the presentation. You may use the chat box for the facilitators to note them. State your name and institution and ask questions concisely. Comments that will benefit others are most welcome. Provide feedback. Help us improve our online events to better understand your needs and preferences. For our registered participants who are on Facebook, make sure that you have answered the survey feedback to ensure that you will receive an e-certificate. Whenever disconnected in the Zoom meeting, please log in again using the link or you may join us at this uh, link. Okay, for the welcome remarks, let me call on uh, Dr. Kindo for the opening. Uh, First and foremost, I would like to acknowledge our research person, Dr. Fidel R. Nimenso, Chancellor, University of the Philippines. To all university officials, directors, deans, faculty, and students, good morning to all of us. Welcome to Professorial Chairholder Webinar with a topic, Math and Complexity in Nature and Society. Mathematics is considered as the study of theory of numbers. It has its complexity. That is why some people considered it as an exact science. Some individuals are asking the relevance of math in their daily lives. Allow me to say that we deal with math in our everyday life. Let us take, for instance, the amount of seasoning while cooking a patient being rushed in an emergency room, the paramedics can calculate the speed of the wheelchair in order to get first aid treatment. An individual who calculates while driving in order to arrive safely. All of these have the essence of mathematics. Math plays a vital role in nature and society. In our present situation, Math serves as catapult in solving the concerns of the society despite of its complexity, wherein data can be derived. Imagine a world without math. We cannot able to determine the world's population. We will be handicapped with the figures needed in order to solve problems that permit the society. I would like to drive home the message that math has its role in improving the lives of people in the society. Let us embrace mathematics and its complexity. With that, I would like to close the opening of my remarks by greeting everybody present in this event. Have a great day ahead of us. Thank you. Uh, for the introduction of our guest speaker for today, let me call on uh, Engineer Rosalinda 
M Golpeo. Our professorial shareholder is a professor of mathematics and the chancellor of the University of the Philippines, Diliman. He studied in UP Diliman and the Sofia University in Tokyo, where he obtained his Master of Science and Doctoral Degree of Science degrees in mathematics. His areas of research are number theory, elliptic curves, and coding theory. Among the awards he has received are the Achievement Award in Mathematics from the National Research Council of the Philippines and the UP Diliman Gawad Chancellor para sa pinakamahusay na guro. He was president of both the Southeast Asian Mathematical Society and the Mathematical Society of the Philippines and has held re different researches and teaching posts in Singapore, Tokyo, Amsterdam, Munich, and Phnom Penh in Cambodia. In 2019, Dr. Nemenzo was elected to the governing board of the National Research Council of the Philippines and chairs its mathematics, uh, mathematics division. Ladies and gentlemen, a professor of the Institute of Mathematics and the Chancellor of the University of the Philippines Diliman, Dr. Fidel R. Nemenzo. Ay, magandang umagal sa lahat. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Muli maraming salamat sa imbitasyon. Uh, I will, I will, um... Hello? 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 Magsishare lang ako ng screen na sandali lang. Okay, sir. Okay. Nak nakikita nyo? Apo, sir. Yes, po. Ayan, uh, uh, good morning, everyone. So the, the title of my talk is Math and Complexity in Nature and Society. Actually, hindi masyadong math ang ikikwento ko. No? Ang uh, ikikwento ko ay complexity science or the study of complex systems. Na mga complex systems na ngayon na isang uh, framework for understanding phenomena in nature and society. At uh, may konting math dahil uh, math ang isa sa mga uh, ginagamit na tools. No? Pero ang uh, papakita ko ang uh, complex systems in nature and society as uh, basically an interdisciplinary area of study. Alam mo ko ano to? It, this, is, this is the tale of a, of a chameleon. No? Uh, I'm, now I'm showing you patterns in nature. The... Um, the, the, the tail of a chameleon, this is not, it, hindi siya parang hose na, na even ang, ang, ang diameter. No? It, it is a slightly, it, it has a, uh, a gentle tapering of diameter so that when curled up, uh, it produces an, a logarithmic spiral. Parang itong spiral ng nautilus shell no? where uh, the, each part, each part uh, as, as you move uh, smaller in scale, each part looks like the, each part looks like the, the, the main. So a logarithmic spiral is, as it gets smaller, it always looks like the larger part. This is, this, uh, the logarithmic spiral is, uh, is uh, ubiquitous. Lagi itong nakikita no, sa nature. This is a raft of bubbles, no? mga, mga bula. Of course, bubbles are spherical in shape. 
But when they get together to form a raft of bubbles, the, each bubble will lose its spherical shape. Makikita nyo na uh, these bubbles uh, intersect at three-way junctions. Yung mga angles nila are close to 120 degrees. Now, this means that most of these bubbles are hexagonal in shape. Eh, bakit hexagon? Mami, paliliwanag ko. The preference for hexagons is actually uh, influenced by the interplay between the materials surface area and tension. No? Uh, in, in mathematics, we call this minim minimization. No? Minimization is a very natural process you see in uh, many parts of nature. This is the eye of an insect, and you will see that uh, there are, in the eye of the insect, you see hexagonal compartments. No? Again, yung hexagons na sa mata ng insect ng to, is influenced by the same forces that shape the, the bubbles in a bubble wrap. Kapag ang tubig ay nasa isang water repellent surface, no? uh, water forms droplets. Again, the shape of the droplet is, for, is dictated by physics. In fact, surface tension. And uh, the, the water repellent surface here is uh, the, the back of uh, a leaf. So you see the veins of a leaf. Again, the veins of a leaf are not accidental. Now, this is a very natural pattern. This is the most optimal way for the leaf to deliver nutrients to every part of the leaf. And uh, if you know um, this uh, mathematical concept called fractals, here you see a fractal where every, uh, the, every part of the pattern is a replication of the, of the larger pattern. The, the, a city is also uh, full of patterns. Uh, a city is, a, is, an in, is an interplay of many factors. No? Uh, architecture, people's preferences, economy, culture, etc. Every day, a lot, you know, hundreds, maybe thousands of different factors come into play with each other and form the behavior of a city. I'm go also going to talk about the city later. In a way, uh, all of these are examples of complex systems. And today I'm going to talk about, not about mathematics, but about complex systems. But I will uh, first talk about mathematics as the study of patterns. No? When we talk of mathematics, we don't talk, we, mathematics is not the study of numbers. Mathematics is the study of patterns. Kapag nakakakita tayo ng numero sa mathematics, ay uh, ang mga numero na gagamit natin, ang, ang mga numero nakikita natin ay mga tools lang na ginagamit para pag-aralan ng patterns. Of course, in my area, number theory, I study numbers themselves. No? But calculus, for example, is not the study of numbers. It's not the study of integrals. It's not the study of derivatives. Calculus, the derivatives and numbers, the integrals you see in calculus are just tools that you use to study a phenomenon of patterns called motion. When you see a sheet of music, the, the, the notes that you see in the sheet of music is not the music itself. These are just symbols that represent ideas in music. In the same way that the numbers you see in this sheet of mathematics are just symbols that represent the mathematical ideas. Uh, of course, the challenge for teachers really is really to um, be able to explain ideas behind the symbols that they write on the board. Kanina sabi, of course, mathematics is used everywhere. In fact, Ang tanong ng mga students, paano nga ba relevant ang mathematics? Ang mga pinag-aaralan natin sa classroom ay ito yung building blocks ng malalaking at ma mahalaga, malalalim na mathematical ideas na ginagamit sa teknolohiya. Halimbawa, GPS. Uh, in ways ay, ay gumagamit ng geometry, trigonometry, statistics, linear algebra. Katakot-takot na mathematics. Hindi natin kailang malaman kung ano yung mathematics sa loob, sa loob ng ating cellphone. Pero... Uh, dahil ang cellphone ay isang black box. No? Nagagamit natin to pero hindi natin alam ang workings nito. We do not need to know the physics and the mathematics to be able an app called Waze. 
but I'm telling you that um, it always runs on the ideas of mathematics, uh, triangul uh, triangulation, etc. Ito na bangit ko last week. Uh, nakita ko tong paper na to, 1991, sa Journal of Australian Mathematical Society. Ang ganda kasi ng, ng pamagat, Sudden Cardiac Arrest and a Problem in Topology. Ang sinasabi dito, cardiac arrest is a topological problem. The heart, uh, the, the behavior of the heart you know, is really a, a function of, uh, of uh, movement, the, the, the contraction and expansion of the muscles of the heart. And uh, uh, dito sa paper na to, uh, model, uh, gumagawa sila ng computer model ng, ng, ng puso gamit ang, ang uh, field of topology. Uh, uh, hindi ko lang kung naalala niyo yung Euclidean geometry. Sa so Euclidean geometry, you know, parallel lines don't meet. Um, but um, parallelism is just an axiom in, 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 uh, in geometry. We can actually create different geometries by, by uh, changing the axioms of geometry. Anyway, there's a strange geometry uh, discovered in the 19th century called non-Euclidean geometry. Uh, nung, nung, uh, nung 19th century pa ng kakaibang uh, napaka weird na geometry to pero uh, 20, 20th century science actually discovered that that uh, non-Euclidean or this bizarre geometry found in the 19th century is the geometry that is that is important for modeling uh, human vision. It's important for modeling uh, uh, the physics of gravitation. There are areas of mathematics, topology, um, uh, petri nets, uh, queuing and network theory. Network theory, babagitin ko ulit mamaya, na maraming gamit, kinagamit sa pagdidesign ng alam ba, interactions ng mga neurons sa ating mga utak. Uh, network theory, petri nets, kinagamit din pag, sa pagdidesign ng efficient at uh, safe train schedules. No? Uh, ang pinapakita ko dito ay isang uh, uh, Ito ang train network, subway train network ng, ng Tokyo. This is probably the most complex, the most complicated train network. And yet all the trains uh, move according to schedule. It's, kung kayo nakapag-schedule na ng mga klase, classrooms, no, uh, ay hindi ganun kadali. Lalo pa kapag meron kang isang complicated na train uh, system like this. But... Uh, Engineers, mathematicians are able to create very efficient train schedules you know, using um, these areas of mathematics. I have a red, uh, a red coin. The question is how many coins can I put around these red coins so that there are no gaps or overlaps? No? In fact, it's an exact number. It's exactly six. Six is a magic number. Six is found in many places in nature. In fact, I can enclose this in a hexagon and using the same, the same shape, I can tile the plane you know? in the same way that bathroom tiles are, squ are square. You can actually tile the bathroom with hexagonal tiles. You cannot do that with pentagonal tiles. Otherwise, there will be gaps or overlaps. You know? uh, six is the maximum. Uh, it's the optimal number for tiling. And this is the reason why hexagons are found in, in uh, beehives. You, you see hexagons or the number six in a snowflake. And you see the number six in uh, the, um, the, the compartments of a bubble wrap, bubble, uh, bubble raft. Um, Fractals, this is, uh, this is a mathematical object that exhibits self-similarity at different scales. It means that every, every portion, every, uh, if you magnify into the details of the fractal, everything will be a magnification of the larger, the, 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 the general set. This is a fractal. This is called a Romanesque broccoli you will see that every little portion is just a magnification uh, or 
if you magnify every little portion, what you see is the overall structure. Kumbaga, may nagsa-self-repeat ang, 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 ang pattern as you go smaller in scale. These are fractals. The one on the left is a fern. Each leaf of the fern is a reproduction of the general uh, pattern, the, 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 the big leaf, the, the big fern. On the, on the right side, you see a mathematical fern. Now this is generated by uh, a mathematical equation. So this is the reason why we say that mathematics can help us model uh, patterns in nature. So we say that when, when we uh, use mathematics as a tool to study nature, um, we uncover patterns, no? but the patterns uh, are just clues no? to, to uh, the laws, the explanations no? that we use to make sense of how the world works. So uh, we use uh, mathematics uh, and other areas of science, no? uh, as a tools to understand how the world works. Sometimes it's not exact, but we get enough insights actually to, to give reasonable explanations to social and natural phenomena. Ang, ang sabi ni Galileo, sabi niya, God wrote the universe in the language of mathematics. In fact, his, uh, his exact quote was that the universe is open to our gaze, but we can only understand it no, if we use the language of mathematics. Uh, pero yung mundo sa panahon ni Galileo ay iba at na, kasabi niya, the, um, the, the nature is governed by certain laws. And if we use if we understand these laws, then we will be able to understand the workings of nature. Um, um, at that time, scientists had a different uh, uh, philosophy. And Tinginila is that we can actually predict everything in the world as long as we know all the assumptions, we know all the variables, and we use the language of mathematics. Yung mundo kasi nila Newton, nila Galileo, ito yung tinatawag natin mechanistic. No? Ang, ang, mechanistic universe. The, the universe could be understood by looking at its component parts. No? Uh, isa, pang, ang, isa pang tawag sa gantong framework ay yung reductionist uh, uh, framework. If you look at the system, the way to understand the system, sabi ng mga reductionists, is to take the component parts. After all, the system is part made up of component parts. If we understand the component parts in the individual uh, links between component parts, then we can understand the, the universe. Now we know that this is not true, no? that, that uh, the universe is not only complicated, but it is complex. No? So today I will talk about complexity. Ano uh, ibig sabihin ng complex? Mahirap intindihin. Complex can also mean Composed of many parts, so the watch is a, is is complicated, at uh, because it is made up of many parts, just like an airplane, very complicated. But uh, we can actually uh, predict the workings of an airplane. We can predict the workings of a clock. In fact, in fact, we can the 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 clock is very exact. That you know exactly how it will behave. Um, let's say 227 hours from now, it, it is predictable. But the real world is not only complicated, it's complex. Uh, traffic is a complex system. Uh, it's complex because it, it, the, the behavior of traffic is governed by so many different factors, um, much more than the factors that, that that uh, enter into the, the machine of an airplane. Later on, I will talk about traffic. No? What, what determines traffic? Well, the number of cars, the type of cars, the behavior of drivers, the culture of the streets, uh, 
disruptions and interruptions in traffic, um, the, the, the shape of the roads, the weather. So a complex system is a, a system composed of many parts, many parts. Uh, but the uh, behavior of the entire system uh, cannot be understood by looking at component parts and individual links between the parts. No? Um, the, 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 the behavior in the entire system is, is influenced by the, the totality of interactions between the parts of the complex systems. I will give um, many examples later. Um, uh, there's an area of science called complexity theory. It's a study of complex systems. Complexity theory is um, not only science, it's also social science. It's actually an interdisciplinary area. So in, in complex systems, it is a framework uh, used for analyzing phenomena that are complex. I'll, um, I'll give you examples later. Um, hindi siya reductionist, no? Ibig sabihin, uh, the, the whole is, it, it is not enough to look at component parts, no? When you put them together, the whole is more than the sum of its, of its parts, no? These are two components of, of, of a system. If I put them together, no? They, they exhibit a different behavior, no? It's not a matter of putting them together. Ano nakikita niyo? Nagkakaroon siya ng emergent behavior. Uh, Siyempre, when it interacts with your eyes, uh, it creates um, an illusion of movement. Well, in a sense, this is, this, uh, this, is, this is a different example of the whole is more than the sum of its parts. No? These, uh, these words taken apart don't mean anything. No? But uh, if you put them in a certain way, it, it creates an image that is deep and beautiful. You know? So you don't, you don't take uh, a poem uh, apart uh, looking at the words. You know? The poem itself are the words and the configurations, you know? the, the order at which the, the, the words are put or laid out. So, ito yung mga properties ng complex systems. I, uh, um, I'll give you now uh, some examples of complex systems. A city is a complex system. An ecosystem is a complex system. The human body is a complex system. The human brain is a complex system. Uh, traffic is a complex system. Uh, a, a large crowd is a complex system. Uh, financial markets are complex systems. Electrical grids are complex systems. Uh, these are the properties of complex systems. Una, non-linearity. Non the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. A non-linear system is very difficult to predict. Kindisha deterministic. Uh, a, a small input into the system can create very large contents. Emergent behavior uh, may... Um, the, the certain uh, global uh, behavior emergence uh, emerges if you look at the totality of the system. Kumaga, uh, may, uh, ang, the, the behavior of a crowd cannot be predicted from the behavior of each individual person. It's uh, individuals seen together, interacting together that creates a behavior of a crowd. Self-organization, um, um, complex systems are self-organizing. It means that kahit na wala siyang isang central leader, nagkakaroon siya ng parang uh, it, it, uh, it always stands towards a certain type of order. Halimbawa, kapag sa, sa, sa airport, o halimbawa may, sa pila ng mga ng, uh, immigration check, no? kapag uh, Maraming, kapag halimbawa, sampung pila dito, makikita nyo na kapag ang, ang mga tao pumila, uh, kahit na walang isa nagdidirect sa kanila, uh, nag, nagkakaroon ng, ng uh, uh, halos magkakas, mag, magkakasing haba ang, ang, ang pila. No? Uh, Self-organizing siya. Ang, ang bawat tao, isang rule lang ang hahanapin. No? Hahanapin lang niya ang pinakamaikling pinaka pila. 
Now, if every person follows that rule, then the tendency is for the, the lines to be of the same length. No? Ibig sabihin, may self-organizing. Nagkakaroon siya ng tendency towards a certain type of order. Adaptation, a complex system uh, adapts to its environment. It's con constantly interacting with its environment, always exchanging information with its environment. And uh, it adapts its behavior. No? Uh, usually, the tendency is adapt your behavior to ensure survival of the system. And it's constantly evolving. You know? Evolving uh, as uh, the context and conditions around it change, a complex system is also evolving. Complex systems are found in nature and society. Again, an ecosystem, um, assist, uh, uh, it's, it's, this is a web of, uh, of uh, prey and predator and, uh, and uh, their environment, the climate. This is, you cannot understand an ecosystem by just looking at individual parts of an ecosystem because the, the, the overall behavior of the ecosystem is actually a function of the, 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 the different interactions and levels of interactions of the elements of an ecosystem. The, the rainforest is an ecosystem. In fact, a rainforest is an endless variety of species. You can walk along uh, a rainforest without seeing the same species twice. Every bush or every tree itself is, uh, can host uh, hundreds of different organisms. So every single tree is an ecosystem in its own. Um, yung the, there are different types of species. There are generalists and there are there are specialists. Alimbawa, uh, uh, ants are usually generalists. They consume anything along their path. Meron namang mga, mga specialists, gaya ng, ng ito, itong uh, dinescribe ni Darwin, itong comet orchid. No? The comet or orchid has a long nectar tube. Uh, long nectar tube. Uh, and it's pollinated by not, not, ordinary butterflies or moths, but by a single species of moth no? uh, with, uh, uh, with a, um, anong tawo dito? Meron siyang uh, patulis. Uh, it's in, in biology, bio, biology, it's called a proboscis, no? which is almost a foot long. So this type of moth that pollinates this comet, uh, comet orchid, they cannot survive without the other. So these are these are specialist varieties. And rain the all the processes in the rainforest, this is an ongoing and a, a rapid uh, rapid process. No? At every second there's a new interaction, sometimes a new species. Um dito sa eto makikita nyo itong pulang Pulang um, halam dito. This is called the bromeliad. No? Um, the reason why bromeliads uh, abound in this forest is because uh, constant rainfall no? uh, uh, washes nutrients into the streams. No? Kaya uh, poor ang soil quality dito. And uh, the, the 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 agents in the forest, like like a bromeliad, acts as a basis. The, the bromeliad is an ecosystem. It holds water. It, it holds uh, nutrients. Sinasalo niya ang tubig. Sa tubig na ito, maraming naka, nakatira. May mga organisms, may insects, there are amphibians. No? Um, so every ecosystem is a, a system of entanglements and interactions. Do you know ants? Um, a colony of ants is an ecosystem, uh, is, is, a, is a complex system. Um, the um, ants are very simple creatures. You know? In fact, uh, some of the simplest, uh, an individual ant exhibits some of the, the most, the simple um, animal behavior. And yet when ants get together, they are capable 
of complex behavior, such as, um, for example, building bridges. The, the ants are able to traverse you know, gaps between surfaces by building bridges. Uh, walang leader to, but the, the individual simple behaviors when taken together produces a complex behavior that allows the colony to adapt to its environment. Um, one way of, of modeling complex systems is using networks or graphs. There's an area of, of mathematics called graph theory. Um, and uh, this, this area of mathematics is used to be able to design and understand the behavior of networks that we find in, in nature. Um, for example, ecosystems can be characterized as, 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 as graphs. If we look at uh, food, food relationships or food webs, power grids are graphs, power supply lines, the, uh, the vascular systems in our bodies, the neural networks in our brains, social networks, for example, the network of, uh, of friendships uh, in, in a social network like, uh, like Facebook, uh, even the behavior of the spread of gossip Chismis uh, is now being studied by psychologists now using uh, mathematics and graph theory. Marketing schemes, but in pyramid schemes uh, can be analyzed using graphs. Even, even uh, text or uh, language uh, in a book uh, can be analyzed using graphs. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, explain this later. Now, um, the brain is a complex system. No? It, it consists of uh, uh, hundreds of billions of neurons, no? all interacting uh, together. So at, at any given point, there are electrical signals being exchanged no? uh, among these billions of neurons. And uh, out of this, uh, this the totality of, of interactions, no? you get the a complex behavior called the mind. This the, the mind is still um, it's 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 very phenomenal. In fact, the question is how does uh, how does the mind work? Um, and we cannot understand the mind by just looking at individual neurons and the interactions between neurons. Um, the the mind uh, is capable of consciousness. It's, it's capable of insight, it's capable of observation, and uh, um, that, that global behavior of the mind uh, continues to be a mystery, but, but definitely uh, this is an example of a complex system. Uh, it's, and now brain scientists are teaming up with mathematicians and, uh, uh, to be able to understand the workings of the human mind. Um, you, uh, Facebook as an, as an app was actually designed by, by uh, computer scientists who wanted to understand the physics of, uh, of social networks or friendships. Um, for example, if, you, uh, if every user of Facebook is seen as a node or a, a node or a, a, a dot, and uh, if uh, two friends are connected or they're friends, uh, they are friends in Facebook, then you draw a line connecting them. And you look at the web of friendships all over the world. Um, you will be able to see very interesting, interesting um, uh, insights uh, into the sociology of social networks by understanding the mathematical properties of, of the graph. At our friend network, na isang tao, uh, uh, the the dots are the friends. If uh, two of your friends have uh, uh, are also friends, then then uh, they are connected by an edge or a line. If you look at this web of friendships, uh, you can you can actually look at uh, your your networks of friends. You have networks of friends among your high school uh, classmates, your org uh, your uh, org mates, and uh, your church mates. And uh, every time 
uh, if you see this clusters, it means these are clusters of friends. So you, you, the, the density of your network uh, actually uh, points out to your cluster of friends, usually defined by, by common interests or common background. This is the network of friendships in, in the US high school. If you um, give different colors to, uh, according to race, you know, um, and more generally, um, if you identify three colors, white, black, and other races, you will see that people of the same race actually tend to, to uh, develop friendships. In a sense, our friendships are based on, on race to a large degree. And so you see the clustering here. This is um, the, net, the, um, the network model of uh, romantic relationships in the high school. Um, I'm sure you, you'd be able to, you'd be able to um, interpret or give some interpretations to, to this. Uh, makikita nyo kung sino faithful sa isa't isa, sino ang mga, mga may serial relationships, etc. Ito si 63 sila yung nasa baba, at sila yung faithful sa isa't isa. The study of complexity science yeah, is interdisciplinary. Uh, it's interdisciplinary and it is... Uh, removing the traditional boundaries between disciplines because in in the study of complex systems you see people from different areas um, working with each other and the disciplines that are involved in the study of complex systems are physics sociology mathematics computer science economics linguistics you know, lingu ling linguistics or the study of language you know, uh, also exhibits uh, certain patterns you know, that can, can only be understood if you use the tools of complexity science and mathematics. This is, um, this is a network of, uh, of uh, collaboration uh, of mathematicians. Of course, uh, who do you collaborate with? You collaborate first with the people in, in, your, in, your, in your discipline, um, people in your same university, etc. Now, uh, I want to say something about traffic. Traffic is uh, a phenomenon that we encounter every day. Ang sabi nila, ano nga ba solution sa traffic? No? Do we build more roads? Do we make the roads bigger? So is the addition of roads a solution to congestion? No? This is the usual engineering, um, engineering uh, approach. No? But if you look at traffic as a, a complex system, a different a different phenomena emerges. No? Ito yung uh, tinatawag na Bryce Paradox. Uh, ang, 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 ang sagot sa katanungan ito is not all the time. No? Dati nagkaroon ng isang traffic gridlock sa New York. Ang ginawa nila, uh, sinarado nila isang malaking kalsada at nabawasan ng kalsada saka umayos ang traffic. So more roads does not necessarily mean less congestion. Um, this paradox is also seen in, uh, in other types of networks like, like uh, power grids. No? Sometimes uh, the expansion of a power grid no, may cause brownouts no, because of, of uh, additional congestion. Um, this phenomenon is found in not only in power grids and node networks, but also in power supplies and uh, other types of networks. In uh, 2003, there was a study uh, uh, made in UP on the, the, the panic behavior of mice. Mice, because mice, in a sense, tends to... Uh, uh, exhibit certain types of uh, behavior that are also found in humans. No? Ang, ang uh, conclusion nila dito sa study to uh, is that uh, ang, ang mga daga parang tao. No? For example, if there's a, a danger that is life-threatening, 
they tend to run away from it. No? And if they are in a closed space, uh, the, the, what the mice that are in panic, they look for the exit and head towards the exit. And uh, they all push each other. No? Walang cooperation. Just like panicking humans. And, and like panicking humans, the animals tend to follow one another rather than looking for the best exit route. No? In the moment of panic, then you lose rationality. You, know, you, you exhibit mice behavior. But analyzing uh, behavior of, uh, in a situation of panic is very important, for example, for, uh, the, um, for example, constructing uh, or um, the, the design of doors in a closed, uh, a closed area. For example, maraming, maraming, nag, uh, maraming uh, uh, sunog na nangyari kung saan maraming namatay, alimbawa yung I mean, ozone disco. Eh, no, hindi ko alam kung ilan ang, ilan ang, ang, ang uh, pintuan doon. But increasing the number of doors does not necessarily, uh, in a sense, reduce the potential of danger. So anyway, uh, studies like this have a lot of implications in the design of large areas or stadiums, for example. How to uh, put the doors, how many doors, and how to design the doors so that in a moment of panic, uh, people are able to, to exit in the, 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 the safest way possible. Um, Fermat, the math mathematician Fermat has, has a, there's a, a principle called the, the principle of least time. No? Uh, it says that uh, between two points, no? for example, light rays passing through different media uh, follow the fastest path between the two points and not necessarily the shortest. We, we say that, of course, kapag isa lang ang dinadaanan nung kung ano man yung gumagalaw, so the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. No? But uh, if uh, that, that agent that will move from point A to point B will have to move uh, across different media or different surfaces, no? then the shortest distance is not... Um, the, the fastest path is not necessarily the shortest distance. This is an example of ants. No? Ito mga, 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 mga langgam moving from point A to point B. No? But they have to move through two different surfaces. No? Uh, the, the, the type of surface will determine the, the, their walking speed along that surface. And you will see that the ants do not move in a straight line. No? They, 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 they are able to find that point along the intersection of the two surfaces no? so that their movement from their point of origin to that point no? and then straight to the point of destination no? uh, is optimal. Parang, alimbawa, isang lifeguard, alimbawa, nakakita ng isang nalulunod sa, 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 sa dagat, hindi naman siya tatako in a straight line, di ba? Tatako, dahil mas mabilis ang movement niya sa, 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 sa buhangin, no? tatakbo mo na siya sa buhangin, not towards the person who is drowning, but towards a point, an optimal point, no? uh, from which he can swim in the short... Uh, in the, he can swim at the fastest uh, possible time uh, to the person who is drowning. This is called uh, uh, the Fermat's principle of least time. So in a sense, um, if you look at these uh, ants that are moving as a colony, um, without a central, without a central uh, a leadership, without a, a leader commanding where, where they should go, they are able to organize themselves so that they are able to, to do their task uh, that is moving from point A to point B in an optimal way. Of course, people sometimes are less rational. No? The problem with people is that their minds is not as simple as ants. And sometimes they, they, uh, they, their behavior is shaped by so many different things. Um, this is an example of self-organization. This is uh, behavior of, of vehicles and people in, uh, 
um, in a traffic intersection. This is in India. Makikita nyo na walang polis, no? Na, o walang traffic light, walang polis, pero walang banggaan. Ito ang tinatawag na self-organization. Uh, they're able to move from origin to their destination in an orderly way. No? Maybe by just following simple rules. No? Maybe the rule is mm, you don't bump into each other. Uh, kapag uh, nauna isang uh, kapag uh, uh, you don't bump into each other tapos siguro bigayan. I don't know whether this is possible in the Philippines, but um, again, this is um, an example of emergent uh, behavior that is self-organizing, you know, self-organization. So a, a, a general um, question in the study of complex systems you know, is how the structure and behavior emerge in complex systems. All of these are complex systems. A jellyfish, uh, a tree is a complex system. A flock of birds is a complex system. A school of fish is a complex system. If you look at the flock of birds, no, they they can they 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 move us in unison. You know? and a flock of birds is actually more complex than an airplane. So I become airplane, hindi naman complex kundi complicated lang. You know? uh, an airplane actually has more parts than a flock of birds. You know? But the flock is an adaptive complex system. You know? The flock adapts to changes in the environment. Uh, a flock is capable of self-organization. Walang leader. Walang, the, the roles that each uh, bird in a flock uh, are very fluid. No? So if you have a formation, uh, one bird at the head of the formation may be, may be replaced by uh, another bird. No? Uh, so no single bird. If you look at a flock of birds in flight, no single bird is essential for the flock's movement or the success of its movement. Pakita na, pakita ko anong yari dito. So, the, the movement of a flock of birds is, is, is a very, very mysterious and very fascinating. You know? The question is, how are they able to move in unison like this without bumping into each other, you know, without a central authority? Actually, um, there is an explanation for this and uh, you can actually model the behavior of birds in this way. Uh, each bird actually is very simple. You know? Each bird in the flock only follows three simple rules. It avoids crowding. Uh, it always steers towards the average heading of neighbors. Lagi siyang gumagalaw kasama ng marami. It always moves towards the average position of neighbors. No? Uh, it moves along the same direction, but it, 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 uh, it, kumbaga, lumalapit siya, lumalapit siya, pero hindi siya, uh, hindi masyadong malapit. No? Parang ilagay mo mga tao na hindi magkakakilala sa isang, sa isang uh, kwarto at sabihin yung uh, kailan na mag, ano, alam, uh, kailan na mag social distancing. No? The people will tend to be equidistant from each other. Anyway, um, we can, we can uh, create a computer program of this behavior. You know? For example, if uh, each of these uh, squares or these dots represent a bird and you program, we can program uh, those three rules into each of these dots. Um, we, we call that flocking. Um, 
if we if we just allow them to move randomly without the flocking, then they move in this way. But if we program those three types of behavior into the birds, they will start moving in flocks. They, they will start moving in unison. So again, this is uh, a com computerization of uh, the, those, those uh, three simple rules followed by each of the birds. The schools of fish also exhibit the same behavior. So schools of fish actually uh, exhibit a very fascinating behavior. And this behavior is, uh, in this particular uh, video clip, uh, this is the mating season, and this is the behavior of fish during mating season. But when a predator strikes the, Alimbawa, kapag uh, uh, jackfish to na kapag may umatakin pating, they also move in a certain way na, so that the, 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 the flock or the school of fish is able to elude na, the attacking predator. So these types of uh, collective behavior uh, are, are influenced by the need of uh, the species to reproduce and the need of the species to protect itself. Na? in conditions of danger. What tools do we use for modeling complex systems? Again, uh, that area of mathematics called network and graph theory. Gumagamit ng statistics of probability theory. It's an area of computer science called agent-based modeling. A lot of computation and simulation because of the the, just the sheer volume of uh, data points. Now we are able to use computers uh, to be able to look at the, the, the total or model the total behavior of, uh, of a system composed of so many different parts. Food webs are, are complex systems. Uh, again, these are the mathematical, the mathematical properties of, of a network and the mathematicians when, when, when they see a graph they look at its topology its uh, centrality they look at distances distances from one point to another they are able to 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 study the patterns of clustering and uh, the behavior of a complex system that is being modeled using networks uh, can be in a sense predicted by looking at these mathematical properties Ito network naman ng mga bloggers sa, sa US to. Hmm. Usually two bloggers are connected if uh, they, uh, ano yan, they provide, uh, like if uh, each provides a link for them. Uh, each, uh, uh, two bloggers are connected if at least one of them provides a link in his or her website to the other blogger. And you will see that uh, there are two types of clustering here. Na? clustering according to your uh, political bias, the Democrats and the Republicans. I mean, son, uh, highly, uh, napaka highly clustered that uh, uh, bloggers only listen to, to uh, people they, um, they uh, agree with. No? So ito yung tinatawag na echo chambers. No? Uh, kayo kayo mismo, kayong parehong uh, political leading, uh, kayo kayo ang nag, uh, nag uusap usap no? You listen more, you tend one uh, tends to listen more to to someone who agrees with your political inclinations compared to others that are opposed to your own political inclinations. Networks are also used to study patterns of contagion and the spread of disease. Um, last week, I talked about the mathematical modeling of COVID infection. Um, the World Wide Web um, is, uh, is, um, is also a complex system and it can be patterned uh, using graph theory, network theory. Uh, mobile phone data, that, that if, if one has access, for example, to all the mobile phone data of, an, of, of a telecom company, uh, 
um, that person will be able to get insights or predictions. Uh, not only the demographics, but for example, the uh, uh, social economic conditions. Uh, in, this, in this particular uh, study of uh, Eagle, Macy, and Claxton, gumamit sila ng cellular phone uh, data to, to, to predict uh, the clustering of uh, social economic groups in the UK. This is um, a very interesting study. It was uh, published in the International Journal of Modern Physics uh, by Legada Monterola, Atun, and, and, and uh, David. These are uh, UP scientists. David is a communication uh, professor. Um, what they did was to analyze, they look at the, the words uh, in um, uh, hundreds of newspaper articles, you know, all dealing with a population issue. So without looking at the meanings of the meanings of words, no? they just look at the, the most commonly used words like uh, yeah, human, basic, Department of Health, Catholic Church, methods, health, population, uh, needs, artificial, all of these words. Um, and they studied the the network properties of these words. Uh, for example, two words are connected if in the same in the same article, uh, one word is within, uh, for example, a ten uh, within a distance of ten words. You know, from halimbawa kapag ang uh, ang, ang layo ng uh, ng salitang government at Catholic Church ay within a window of, um, of five words. Then you you connect those two uh, dots. By looking at the network of words, they were able to, to uh, without looking at meanings, they were able to identify the different frames used in the discussion of the population issue. Nandito ang, ang uh, develop the, the framework of the, of the NGOs you know, where they look at the, the uh, population uh, as uh, as an important dimension in uh, in human development, uh, they also identified the the reproductive uh, health frame, and they also uh, identified the framing of the Catholic Church in the sense that these are uh, three different ways of looking at the same issue, and they were able to identify these clusters of analysis, clusters of framing, uh, without looking at the meanings of words, but just by uh, understanding the, the networks of words. By the way, uh, this paper was published in a physics journal. So sabi natin, usually physics is a study of physical phenomena, but now because of um, uh, analytical tools that were developed by physicists to study physical phenomena, uh, these tools are now being used to study other types of phenomena, social phenomena, and in this case, linguistic phenomena. This is another interesting article, again, published in the International Journal of Modern Physics. Uh, this is about the disambiguation of prose and poetry. And uh, using um, the tools that you use for studying physical phenomena, uh, uh, network theory, uh, complexity theory, they were able to study patterns that are distinct in prose and poetry. So in a sense, um, um, yung, yung, yung networks, the graphs uh, that characterize poems and characterize short stories, for example, have very peculiar mathematical properties. So in a sense, without looking at the meanings of words, you can actually uh, run a computer program through a mass of words you know, and identify uh, which is poetry and which is fiction, which is poetry and which is short story. Here, um, uh, in another uh, physics journal, uh, the authors uh, analyzed the multi level, multi -level marketing schemes, schemes. 
and they were able to study the dynamics and structure of uh, these marketing enterprises. And the, with this, they were able to analyze at which point uh, a pyramiding scheme uh, falls down, at which point it is equitable, at which point it is profitable. Of course, equitable, uh, profitable, these are the, the promises of a marketing scheme. But uh, most marketing schemes are scams you know, because at, at some point they all fall apart. This is a network of uh, thesaurus. We just, uh, this is a network of, um, of uh, synonyms. Okay, uh, this is my summary. Uh, complex systems are found everywhere in nature and society. The, the study of complex systems is called complexity theory and uh, or complexity science. And uh, it looks at uh, complex systems uh, as uh, systems composed of many interrelated parts uh, that, um, that exhibit what we call emergent behavior and self-organization. Ginagamit ng complexity science to address real world issues you know, because a lot of the phenomena in nature and society are actually complex in nature. Um, Networks, the mathematics of networks is a very important tool in the study of complex systems. And complexity science actually uh, is an, um, a nice opportunity for working across disciplines. So in complexity science, you see physicists working with mathematicians, mathematicians working with social scientists and statisticians, journalists as, uh, working with computer scientists, Linguists who study uh, the, the patterns of language. No? You see linguists studying um, uh, using uh, the tools of computer science to study the dynamics of language. Um, so this is this is my last slide. No? I just wanted to to uh, give an overview of uh, complex systems and complexity science as a framework, as an approach to study uh, phenomena. No? Uh, of course, central to the study of these phenomena is mathematics. You know? But here, mathematics cannot work alone because uh, you will have to team up, team up with different disciplines to study uh, the complexity of behavior. So this is my last slide. Maraming salamat sa lahat. Thank you, Dr. Nemenzo for the very interesting, informative topic about math and complexity in nature and society. Hindi po sir, maraming maraming salamat po. Okay, now let's proceed to open forum. Uh, please uh, put your uh, any questions no, or comments in the chat box. Sir, we don't have questions on our chat box even in the Facebook live. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, mukhang uh, naiintindihan po. Actually, napaganda po talaga ng topic ni Sir, no? About, uh, yan, complex in nature. Si Ma'am Rosal, Ma'am. Hindi ko po ba si Ma'am Rosal? Hello, Ma'am. Baka meron po kayong comment? They actually, nagdi-discuss kami kanina, no? Apo. About the movement of the birds. Birds nga ba yun o fish? Apo. Ah, naantok okay. ako eh. Mm. So... Diba, uh, na namin, uh, as a, si Ian has the question actually, hindi ko yun original. No? Kung pinafollow daw ng movement ng mga birds, yung coronoid system, yung coronoid pattern, kasi uh, maintaining the distances between them, uh, yung bang distance na yun ay fixed, I mean, equally distant, hindi uh, makilang equally distant ang coronoid pero maintaining a fixed distance between them or nagvavary yung distance between the birds as long as meron silang social 
distancing <laughs> even before the COVID, no? You, I'm not familiar with the movement actually of these birds or of the species, no? Wala na may maintain yung distance na lang. Bali, yun yung ano ng aming discussion lang kanina. Thank you po, Ma'am Rosal. Buro po wala nang tanong. Salamat yung bits. Meron pa po ba? Okay, kung wala nang tanong, uh, again, maraming maraming salamat po. Now, uh, let's proceed to the synopsis. Let me call on uh, Professor Kenneth James Nugid, the Chief uh, of the Center for Statistical Studies Section, uh, Institute for Data and Statistical Analysis. Sir Kenneth. And I, I forgot I was on mute. Anyways, good morning, everyone. So welcome to our uh, nine professorial uh, shareholder uh, lecture series. And are you hearing me loud and clear? Am I heard loud and clear? Yes, sir. Across all participants. Thank you. Okay. So I'm. So I will provide the uh, provide you the uh the synopsis to dr nimenso's talk for today so topic was indeed very nice very interesting and uh, it actually opened our views uh about nature and how mathematics will be an important part to understand our uh, surroundings though it is not really as very compre uh, comprehensive as it can be because uh, there are really many more complex systems that uh, that exist in nature but the speaker was able to provide us a uh, an overview a good overview of how complex systems exist in the in our uh, surrounding so complex systems exist in our uh, in nature and society, and and in fact, uh, he had a good start to introduce the topic by uh, showing some patterns in nature, some interesting patterns that exist in nature, like the uh, the way the tail of a chameleon is uh, or is a uh, form and how the wrap of bubbles would actually uh, optimize the use of space when they get together. And uh, how these uh, complex systems would actually exist in nature, particularly in, uh, in a city, which is uh, described to be one such complex system. So with mathematics being very important as a tool to understand this complex system, so the speaker reminded everyone that it is not just a study of numbers, but mathematics is a study of the patterns that exist around us. Just like uh, musical symbols are used to represent musical ideas, Mathematical symbols are just used to represent mathematical ideas as well. And in, in fact, the, uh, the speaker, Dr. Nemenso, was able to lay out or show us some of the uh, nice applications of uh, mathematics in understanding. which we think it is just actually a computer tool, but actually it makes uses of mathematical tools to exactly determine your position in space or, uh, or to understand our, to determine our position uh, with utmost precision. 
though it may not be as an exact representation of our position, was also able to present a uh, mathematical modeling of a uh, of cardiac arrest based on the topological properties of the uh, of the of the human heart. And then uh, he was also able to show that or demonstrate the the non Euclidean geometry was able to provide mathematics for understanding gravitation as well as uh, human vision. But more importantly, we we see these patterns as uh, as clues to uh, the laws that actually govern how how the things around us work, the interplay of different factors uh, in uh, different complex systems. Though, in most cases, uh, we rely on the, the, uh, the classical way to understand them by looking at component parts or what he mentioned as the reductionist view. But complex systems are not really easy to understand just by simply observing some component parts. It will have to be, uh, we, we have to understand it on a, on a larger scale rather than just examining small parts of the complex system. A complex system is indeed a dynamic set of uh, composed of many, many parts that interact or are interdependent to one another. And in fact, in our society, there are many different ways or many different complex systems that exist. He mentioned about ecosystems, the human body being a, uh, an example of a uh, complex system, financial markets uh, being uh, another example, and many more. And in fact, he also mentioned uh, the properties of such uh, complex systems like nonlinearity, emergent behavior, that for emergent behavior, we, we don't get to predict the, uh, the behavior of a whole by just simply looking at the behavior of a specific portion. Self-organization that allows uh, a complex system to put things into order, adaptation and evolution. And in fact, it was very notable that complex systems are actually modeled using uh, an important mathematical tool called graphs and network. And in fact, uh, I remember one, one particular portion of the, the talk where he mentioned about neural networks. And indeed, uh, real world issues and problems are, are currently being uh, modeled using neural network models, wherein you have a set of input data, and then you, you mimic the way the brain can think that there are many, or there can be infinitely many possibilities that uh, can turn out given this, uh, given this set of data. And there will be also many possible outcomes if we try to mimic the way a brain can actually think. So, or different uh, people can actually think. So complexity theory has been a very exciting or a very uh, relevant field of study nowadays because one, it allows us to understand complex system and it is actually interdisciplinary uh, the, uh, or this, the, the area of complexity theory allows us to remove boundaries between different disciplines. So it allows us to unify other uh, areas. That complexity theory or understanding com complex systems that does not only rely on the natural sciences, but it also allows us to explore the use of uh, behavioral sciences to understand complex systems. And it is very important to prepare ourselves 
to understand complex systems by a good background in network theory, probability and statistics, agent-based modeling, and simulating uh, or sim computer simulations. So indeed, it is not really uh, easy to understand the, uh, the behavior of complex systems, but complex, complexity theory will really open up uh, more ideas of how we can understand the, uh, the behavior of the things around us. Again, good morning. Thank you, uh, Professor Kenneth James Tinugid. For the awarding of certificate, uh, let me call on uh, Dr. Jackie Di Uricha, the Director of the Research Management Office. Hello, good morning. Let me read the citation. Polytechnic University of the Philippines, this certificate of recognition is given to Chancellor Fidel R. Nimenso in grateful acknowledgement of his distinguished and invaluable service, tendered as guest of honor and speaker in the science, engineering, and technology professorial chairholder lecture series 2020, entitled Map and Complexity in Nature and Society, even this third day of December 2020, at the PUP main campus, Santa Mesa, Manila, Philippines. Signed, Dr. Manuel M. Muhi, University President. Thank you so much, Sir Pidel. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor. Salamat po ng marami. Thanks. Salamat, salamat, President Bong. Maraming salamat. Okay, uh, for the uh, evaluation, please click the link dun po sa ating chat box no? until 11.59 p.m. today. Okay. Uh, for the future events, uh, on December 11, uh, the next professorial checkholder no? uh, is Dr. Ryan S. Evangelista. His topic, IT Project Management, the Globalized Society. Then on December 12, uh, our spe resource speaker is Engineer Ryan Ben Sabilala. His topic is Sustainable and Healthy Spaces Through Well Building Standard. Okay. Uh, for the closing remarks, uh, let me call on uh, Dr. Lincoln A. Bautista, the Dean of the College of Science. Thank you, sir. Ed Con. Narinig ko po ako. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank President Dr. Manuel M. Muni to uh, Dr. Fidel Nimen. So, thank you very much, sir, for gracing our professorial lecture series for two weeks. Indeed, uh, we learned a lot from you, especially for today, because we learned that complex systems are not yet that complex and it can be simplified. Uh, I have to, I remembered most of the, your uh, lecture today and ang aking pong tumatak sa akin ay ito po, complex systems are ubiquitous in nature and society. And I'm very uh, uh, curious about the word ubiquitous. So I searched it in uh, the internet and I found out that the word was first used in 1572. And then it became a little bit popular in the mid 19th century, 1830. 
and the meaning is uh, very fascinating because it is present, appearing, and can be found everywhere. The second na tumatak po sa amin, sa akin, ay networks are the backbones of complex systems. So ngayon po, technology natin ay masyado malawak. Kaya po, siguro, para talagang magkaroon tayo ng unawa sa complex systems, we need networks. Individually, we have we are performing very complex in our society. Siguro, uh, tayo ay una, naging anak, brother, sister, son or daughter, and then nagkaroon tayo ng friend, we became student, classmate, niece, cousin, nephew, then we became father, mother, co-worker, community, neighbor, employee, employer, and still evolving. Yun ang complex eh, still evolving. So marami pa tayong mga roles. Uh, marami po kami natunan, Dr. Nemenso, and uh, maraming maraming pong salamat sa inyo. Sa mga committee po, uh, committee ng PCHLS Session 9, na pinangunahan po ni Ma'am Flora Quindo, si Rolito Mahagway, Sir Ed Conbacay, si Josie Golpeo, Joseph Llanes, Gavin, at iba po mga miyembro ng uh, PCHLS Session 9. Maraming maraming po salamat, lalo na sa mga nasa mga background ng ating uh, session ngayon. Uh, complex, complex, and complex, pero makapadali po yan through the use of mathematics. Maraming salamat po. Thank you so much, no, Dr. Lincoln A. Bautista. Yan. Uh, for the recognition of participants, uh, President Manuel M. Muhi, our university president, PUP Aggregates, PUP Lopez, Cebu Technological University, Pangasinan State University, University of the Philippines, Biliran Province State University, Bukidnon State University, University of the East, Western University State University, Capiz State University, Universidad de Manila, PUP San Juan, FEU Institute of Technology, Laguna State Polytechnic University, National University, Yati University, Pamantasan ng Lungsod ng Maynila, PUP College of Science, PUP College of Engineering, TICE PUPSC, PUP uh, RAILSS, PIP NCR, Cotobato City State Polytechnic University, PUP Mathematics Club, Malayan Insurance, Samar State University, UST, Cebu Normal University, CAAP, KSME Qatar, DOST ITDI, Mindanao State University Marawi, Mariano Marcos State University, The Mechanics, TIIE PUPSC, Alpha Mart Trading Philippines, University of the Philippines Manila, University of the East Caloocan, LPU Cavite, Iris. Again, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat.
Okay, uh, for the photo opportunity, please uh, turn on your uh, camera. Gallery. Open po. Five galleries. Five galleries. Smile po. Gabi. Okay po. Um, magka, uh, Magka-count po ako ng 3. Oh, 300? 3 okay. <laughs> <Three> lang, sir. 3 <laughs> lang po. <laughs> okay po. Okay. Uh, first slide po muna tayo. 1, 2, 3. Okay po. Uh, next slide po tayo. Okay. 1, 2, 3 Okay Next slide po tayo okay, 1 2 3 okay, po. Next slide po ulit 1 2 3 Okay po Next slide po Last, ito na po yung last slide. Okay. One, two, three. Okay po. Thank you po. Thank you, Sir Fidel. Thank you po. Salamat po ng marami. Salamat Thank po. you. Sir Fidel, salamat po. Thank, Thank you, you, Sir Fidel. Fidel. Dalawa ko. <laughs> Thank you, Sir. Thank you, Sir. Thank you, sir. Congrats. Good night, sir. Okay, let's... Uh, no? No, let's Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. sir. Bye-bye. <laughs> May, may ice cream daw si Kwan eh. <laughs> Santay ka kay sir. Santay sa Hindi sa kanila, Bom, thank you po sir Bom. Marami marami salamat po. Thank you po sir. Sir Lincoln, sama ako. Section 9.
Sa isang igla, mga ngiti na takpan, mahigpit na yakap, kinang pagkawalan. Dumaan ng dilim, napuno ng bituin, sa iyong dilim, pag-ibig mas nagningning. Hinahanap ang kahapon. Sa panibagong ngayon Marami ang nabago Ngunit di ang pagmamahal mo Ngayong Pasko Diriwang ang mundo Sa pag-ibig Ay may himala May panibagong simula Ngayong Pasko Harapin ang bukas, ikaw ang gabay sa bawat lagdas. Kawin kami liwanag para sa isa't isa. Pag-asang sumisinag sa pamilya at sa kapwa. Ngayong Pasko, magdiriwang ang mundo ko Sa pag-ibig mo'y may himala May panibagong simula Ngayong Pasko, pamalik ang saya Dahil ikaw ang liwana Ang ikaya Ikaw lang, ikaw lang Ikaw ang liwana Ngayong Pasko, babalik ang saya 